Hello, this video is going to demonstrate how to get started with Fire Family Plus. First, I'm going to show you where to go to download Fire Family Plus, and then we'll look at how to locate different RAWs and what criteria you should use to select those RAWs based on your project objectives. And then I'll show you where to go to download the historic weather data for those RAWs. And then we will import that information into Fire Family Plus. I will be using lots of different links in this video, and those um, at web addresses are going to be included in the description below. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are on firelab.org for Fire Family Plus. And you, to download Fire Family Plus, will scroll down, and under Downloads and Users Guides, you can click Fire Family Plus Software. On this page has some good background, so I encourage you to check it out as well. You can see a link here for Fire Family Plus job aids. These are individual documents that have been created that provide some step-by-step -step instructions on how to do different procedures in Fire Family Plus. So these are a great resource. Uh, so you can click the, the zip file here to download that. And these are updated frequently based on uh, when procedures change or additional uh, procedures are added. So check the date here of when they were most recently updated. And if things have been changed since you last downloaded, then download these again. So I recommend that you download those and they will help you get started in some of these processes. All right, so then we'll go over here to the Fire Family Plus software and you can select the current version of Fire Family Plus and download that. And I've already got it, so I will move on to my next step which is to select my RAWs. The method that I like to use is to download a file that displays the RAWs locations in Google Earth. And this allows me to really scroll around and see where these RAWs are. Um, so I can download these KML files and it will open up in Google Earth and I'll get that open here. All right, so here is what this file looks like in Google Earth. And I'm going to be zooming into the Johnson Bar fire area. Johnson Bar occurred in 2014. And for this scenario, what I will be selecting a ROS for is to try and model the fire behavior that occurred on the Johnson Bar fire using the weather conditions that occurred at the time. And so I've got two different RAWs to select. I've got the Fen RAWs station and the Syringa RAWs station over here. Which one do I select? The four criteria that you'll use to select a RAWs are going to be first proximity. Which one is the closest to your area? And both of them are relatively close. Of course, this Fen RAWs station does seem to be a little bit closer. Uh, the second one is elevation. Is the RAWs located at the same elevation as your project below or above? Uh, you can see that the Fen is below here. This is in the valley bottom. And the Syringa is mid-slope. So this one appears to have a better location as far as elevation goes. Um, the next is aspect. Uh, is it a representative aspect, which is going to influence your fuel moistures and uh, which, of course, will influence your fire behavior? So this is, again, in the valley bottom, but it does look to be a little bit of a southerly slope there versus this northeastern slope of my fire. And this does appear to be on the south slope of this um, of this hillside. And then the fourth criteria is topography. Uh, we have two different drainages that we're seeing here. This Syringa Raw station is located on an east-west drainage, and the Fen Raw station is located on a north-south drainage. If you were to try and model the fire spread that occurred um, on this northeast-facing slope, you would imagine that the winds that were influencing this would be mostly in line with what's been recorded at the Fen Raz versus the winds that would be at the Syringa, where you might get some pretty distinct differences in the winds because of these topographic features. And the main message here is that when you are selecting your Raz, it's important to know when they might be appropriate uh, for that location and when they might not be and what features it might be measuring well or not. And looking at more than one RAS is pretty important to get a, some kind of a, a concept for how different the weather can be, even from only slightly different sites. So I would record the name and the number for these different RAS so that I can find their historic information in the next sites that we'll look at. A couple other things to consider when you are selecting your RAS is that sometimes you might not have a station that is anywhere near your project area. And in that case, you might just have to do your best. You select those uh, RAWs that are closest or that have the most similar features, and then you compare that to what they're getting on the ground. And 
to take it to that next level, you can always get out to your unit or have someone else get out to your area and measure the weather and then compare it to what those RAWs are saying. And if you're seeing that there is a RAWs that is relatively far away from your area, but it's matching closely with the weather that you're seeing at your project site, then it might be a good fit. Or maybe it's, again, picking up some variables that are really close and others it's not so close and you find a different RAWs that has a better wind um, wind measurements for your area and one that has a better temperature and relative humidity measurements for your area, it's okay to mix and match. So getting out into the field and really comparing what those RAWs are saying to what you are seeing on the ground, it's a pretty important step that um, a lot of people don't take the time to do. So if you can, then get out there and measure it. All right, so let's get moving on to downloading weather data. So before getting into the details of downloading, I have an important stipulation, which is that there are lots of different places that you can get historical weather data, and not all of them are created equal. And the steps for obtaining this weather data are changing all the time. And so if what you see looks a little bit, a little bit different than what I have, and you're not able to overcome those differences um, with just exploring around, then you're always able to reach out to the help desk and get what the current strategies are for downloading this weather data. The important thing to look for when you're downloading weather data is whether or not the weather data are hourly. If you have just daily weather data, you're not going to be able to calculate the same type of indices as you would with hourly data. Uh, on this CIFA site, it has hourly weather data available uh, since around 2000 when solar radiation was included in uh, those metrics. And most weather sites have data that are hourly starting from about 2014. That's why we go to this site for the longer term hourly data and we'll go to another site for the most recent hourly data. So I'm gonna zoom in to uh, my general location. I have two ways to do this. The first is when I know when, where my RAS is, which is what I'll be performing for you right now. And the second will look it up by its number. All right, so here are my RAS. I've got my Fen here and my Syringa. And to obtain the weather, all I need to do is just click on this um, link for hourly data. And what downloads is a file that has the extension of .fw13, which is what Fire Family Plus is gonna be looking for. So once it's downloaded, you wanna take it from the download folder and you'll put it into your project folder and you'll name it something meaningful. And it's suggested that you include, of course, the station ID, which is this 101013 number. And then you include that this came from the CEFA site, so at C-E-F-A, so that I know where my data came from if I have um, some, some different problems with the data. Now this time, uh, the data for the Syringa is not coming through. So I would actually use a different method to download the data for Syringa since when I click on this, it just brings me to another page. So you may end up with some issues with depending on the RAWs that you're selecting. That's why there's always nice to have more than one way to download your data. So let's say I do not know the exact location of my RAWs. I've been given a RAWs number and I need to download that information. I can go to this, this additional CIFA site and I can put that station ID in here. So for my FEN RAWs station, the station ID was 101013 and I can locate that FW13 file. And then I can select this link at the bottom here to download in the FW13 format. Um, so what this has given me is the uh, hourly weather data, but it's not necessarily up to the current date because this is updated quarterly. So what I'll need to do is, uh, in order to ensure that I have the, the weather data up to today, I'll need to go to an additional site. Now you're gonna go to the FAM website and you're going to uh, access the more recent weather data from this area. So the first thing we'll do is go to the public access records, public access report, and we will go to the team content tab here, which is what it defaults to. And if we're getting weather data, we're gonna go to the weather data extract and go to historical and FW13. And we'll enter our RAS number and we would like it to cover from now to uh, two years ago. Uh, ideally, there's some overlap between the data set that we downloaded prior and this one, and we're looking for the hourly weather data. And down here at the bottom, we'll click Finish. So after several minutes, I finally have my downloaded file, 
And now we're going to go and download the station catalog information. So we'll go to back to a folder here and where we clicked historical before, now we're gonna click station catalog data extract and we will click station information and we'll enter our ID and click finish down here at the bottom. And our station information is now downloaded. Now in order for Fire Family Plus to recognize these files, we need to make sure that the file extension is correct. So we're gonna to go to the downloads folder and we'll move each of these downloaded files into our working folder. And we're gonna change our information. We'll first make them name something meaningful and the station information needs to be a .txt file, and we'll call this station information for fen, and this is going to be the fen, and we'll, we'll call it DW for data warehouse, and we'll have the extension be FW13. All right, so now I'm going to download my Syringa ROS um, from the data warehouse using the same, uh, same procedure I just performed. Now we're ready to import this data into Fire Family Plus. Notice that I'm not just opening the weather data and then viewing it. This is a program that allows you to open and manipulate and make graphs for this. But the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new project. And I will name my project um, into my, my working folder. And because I'm working with data from the um, Johnson Bar Fire, I will name it the Johnson Bar. All right, step number two, now that I have this saved, is to import my data. Uh, data, import and I will import the weather data that I downloaded from the FEN and the Syringa ROS. This question about overriding existing records, most of the time you will be selecting no. I'm not gonna cover the instances where you would select yes at this point, you'll get to that in more advanced lessons, but for right now you can select no when you're, asking, when you're asked if you want to overwrite the, the files. All right, so that took a couple minutes to load up. I'll close this window, and now I'm gonna load in my station catalogs. So what I'll do here is, in this drop-down arrow, I'll select all files, then I can see, um, what I had done is I did change the names of each of these station ID, because they're named the same things, and I couldn't put the two of them in the same folder, so I, Make sure I was using my good naming conventions there. And then I'll select open. Looks like I have one error encountered. So I can look and see what that error might be. Looks like I've got some missing information. But for now I'm, I'm okay with where I'm at. So I'll click close and then close. And now what I have here are my two RAWs. So let's look at what we have here for the FEN RAWs. Oh, I know, I didn't import my other stuff. We got one more thing to do here. I need to uh, import my FEN information from my CIFA site. And I'm going to select no. All right, so now we can check our data out. And uh, what alerted me to that is I could see that the data years only went from 2014 to 2020, and I knew that I had downloaded more data than that. So now I can click and see that I've got data back until 2001. Um, when I look at my Syringa ROS, I can see that I have data back from 2012. When I downloaded that data, I requested data back until 2010, but it looks like only data from 2012 is available. Something important to remember that uh, the data from 2012 to 2014, that is only daily observations. I only have hourly observations from 2014 to 2020. So the last step before you are ready to make your figures is we need to make sure that we have our data properly secured. So I'm going to first save my project 
and I am going to compact my data. And this is just going to keep Fire Family Plus running smoothly. Uh, this is a system that doesn't have a lot of space because uh, complicated background things with Fire Family Plus. It's important to compact your data when you're doing a lot of processing, especially if you've just created your database, it's important to compact this. Um, make a pattern for yourself, compact at the beginning of your work sessions or at the end, and then you'll keep your calculations being created accurately. So I will also go to my project folder here where I've saved my Johnson Bar project and I'm going to zip them together. And I'm going to create a zip file that contains my project as a backup. The reason that a zip file is a nice way to go is that then I'm less likely to kind of overwrite it if I'm um, trying to figure out which one to open and work on. All right, now you're ready to move on to the next video about how to create some awesome figures using Fire Family Plus.